So next, we're going to talk with Trisha Lewis of Pacific Rim Environmental. Uh, she's going to talk about how she used ChatGPT to help her win a $1 million contract based on an RFP that came across her desk at the very last minute. So normally an RFP will take her, a request for a proposal from a government agency would take her two weeks to put together. She was able to put this proposal together in half the time and it was better than her normal output uh, leveraging ChatGPT. And so uh, Trisha is gonna talk about that. Trisha is the CEO of Pacific Rim Environmental. Um, she's been running the company for more than three decades um, and uh, they offer um, uh, it kind of, uh, uh, thousand, they work on thousands of projects, starting with the RFP process, contract management, field operations, um, all across uh, the industries that they serve. And so um, before we get into her specific use case, I want to kind of place this in the different range of possible uses for business. So this is a beautiful example, just like far hands before it, of using existing off-the-shelf tools, such as ChatGPT, Jasper, Opus, Bing, Copilot, Midjourney, to build what you need. Um, we're gonna have examples of more advanced use cases uh, from Gary and, and, and Amy, but this is, in essence, the simplest use case we're gonna show you. And it's also, in many ways, the most powerful in terms of ROI because she won a million dollar contract that she might not have had time to bid on if not for ChatGPT. So um, uh, over to you, Trisha. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here today. I appreciate it. And um, the exciting thing about the, the process that we have, that we used was that it was quick and we were in a bind. We had uh, less than a week to get all of our information together. But on top of that, we had 32 years of content that kind of came in um, at different um, different levels of, of time over the years. And so we were able to take all of this content and kind of mush it in together and, and use that data to make a better pattern for our, our proposal. So the efficiency that we had with the jet chat GPT um, saved us time. It it wrote our response um, from, you know, from us writing it from scratch to the, it pulling it together. It took all the different um, diverse perspectives that we were using because um, over the years, we've had different people writing our re responses and um, it brought that together and put it in one voice, which I think was probably um one of the best parts of, and the most incredible part about it was it, it made it clear and concise and really cohesive for us to um, tailor it to the company that we were sending the response to as well. And um, it, it worked. Um, uh, what specifically was better? So we, faster we get, but what was better about the RFP you you you, you were able to build? Like, what, where were you able to actually improve upon past RFPs? Yeah, so um, I think it just kind of took the language that we had and um, pulled it pulled it together. And oh, how do I explain this? Um, it tailored it to fit the client. So we used our words that we had and pieces of the RFP. And that was our prompt, like how, what they were looking for, we used that to prompt us um, with, with the paragraphs, with the resumes, with past projects and tailored it to fit that client. Perfect. And um, if you were, you know, there are other people on this call today that work it, within the government space that are responding to RFPs what did you learn from your, um, you know, AI, um, you know, experimentation that you would want to share uh, with others uh, in terms of how to best use it? Um, I think smaller bites at a time, you know, take, keeping your prompts really clear, exactly what you're looking for, how you want it to come back out. Um, and do, using like, don't throw in five pages worth of stuff and, and try to bring it, 
really short and, and to the point, what was their question? Their question was, can you survey these buildings using um, AHERA inspection rules? And yes, so how, and, and, and having that prompt and write our response directly to what they were asking. Perfect. You know, there was a question in the chat about copyright issues. Um, you know, this is related to, you know, any generative AI. And right now, I mean, first of all, it's an area of law that is completely uh, new. Uh, and there are no clear answers, nor there really are precedents. So right now we're in kind of a Wild West situation where as long as, you know, you're, you, especially on text, as long as you're not using the same names, uh, you know, you are, you know, and, and, and the story is different, maybe inspired by, but different, uh, you should be pretty safe. It's getting complicated though, right? The, the use of voice, for instance, like using, um, you know, uh, the weekend's voice on a song or Drake's voice on a song is starting to get into a little bit of a gray area. Um, you even see, um, you know, there's a case with, uh, Taylor Swift becoming the co-writer, uh, of a song. Uh, written by, help me, um, Olivia Rodrigo, because even though the song was totally different, it was inspired by one of Taylor Swift's songs. So that's a really interesting example where, um, you know, copyright gets a little messy, especially when it comes to singing and songwriting. So I, I do not want to tell you that uh, you're free and clear to use this. It's just not clear. You definitely should have, if you're not sure, a lawyer, uh, you know, in your uh, corner uh, guiding you. But uh, for most of us small businesses who don't have a full time legal team, um, you know, in most cases uh, of generative AI uh, with like chat GPT, you're generally free and clear. I think it starts to get a little bit grayer when you start to use images, uh, when you start to use uh, video and especially when you start to um, use video or images or, or voices that are uh, based off of real people. But look, Sarah Silverman has sued, um, you know, about the creation of jokes that are in her voice uh, through ChatGPT. Um, we have examples of, uh, uh, you know, Getty Images has sued over the use of their images in the training material. Um, the strike right now by actors and, and writers is largely around or in part around uh, the risk that AI poses to their livelihood. So just uh, the bottom line is as a small business, you need to tread carefully, pay attention, keep up to date, uh, lawyer things when necessary, and just recognize that there is a risk associated with doing this kind of thing. Thank you so much, Tricia, uh, for your case study uh, and for your inspiring example. Um, I'm going to be closing the poll here momentarily. So guys, if you haven't yet uh, responded to the AI and you, please do. And then uh, I'm going to then bring up uh, our next uh, amazing presenter, uh, Amy Wenslow. So stand by, Amy.